Hello, I'm Matt Galloway, and this is The Current Podcast. Attention stargazers and night sky watchers, NASA has a message for you. Get out of the city this weekend. Find the darkest outdoor location you can and look up. The most anticipated meteor shower of the year is set to peak Sunday night through to Monday. It's called the Perseid Meteor Shower. It happens every year, but this one is supposed to be extra special. Gary Boyle, also known as the Backyard Astronomer, is here to tell us why. He is an astronomy educator as well as a former columnist for the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Good morning, Gary Boyle. Good morning, Susan. Okay, why is this meteor shower in particular so special? Well, every meteor shower is special when people actually get out, as NASA says, get out of town and look up. I mean, the night sky has been entertainment for millennia. People didn't know what they were looking at, especially when it came to meteor showers or uh, aurora, comets, whatever. But now we know what they really are, beautiful streams of debris from, from comets. So yes, the, the moon will not interfere too much this year. Uh, the moon will set about 11, 11.30 midnight, depending on what night you go out. And uh, really, it's, 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 it's not one of the, the best, well, it's one of the best ones of the year, but it's the time period. It's summertime, people are on vacation at the cottages. Why not get out and really enjoy? Oh, okay, paint a picture of, uh, of what people will see when they look up, if they're in the right spot. Well, really, a, a meteor shower is shooting stars. And it's not really a star that's shooting, but a small grains of sand. And really what's producing this is from Comet Swift-Tuttle that was discovered back in 1861. And when a new comet rounds the sun, it's locked in, in an orbit. Just like when you throw a baseball straight up in the air, it stops and comes back down because of gravity. Well, comets do this too, but in space. Now, then they come back to the sun every so many years. In this case, uh, every 133 years. And it was last um, seen around the sun in 1992. So what really occurs is when the comet moves in towards, say, the orbit of Jupiter, away from the, the, uh, the, the Kuiper belt, way out in space, now it begins to melt. The frozen gases, water vapor, uh, begins to fracture the surface a bit, begins to vent out, sublimates, make this fog. And now some sand grit gravel is now being thrown off the comet, making this beautiful long tail. Well, if the geometry is correct, as Earth goes around the sun once a year, we plow through this debris just like bugs on a windshield in summertime. And... Depending on the showers, sometimes we get a lot more, sometimes a lot less. There are even showers with about five per hour, but this will be about 80 or 90 per hour. So it should be a great show for that. And it, it's a lot prettier than bugs on a windshield. It, it is. <laughs> it is. A, 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 the, the, the only windshield you really have to clean are, are your glasses, probably from, from the dew at night. And uh, one good thing about being out in the countryside with the moon at, at bay, because next year the, the moon will be about 90 90 percent uh, lit you'll have the milky way the beautiful band of part of our 400 billion stars of our galaxy the planet saturn is rising at 9 30 we're gonna have jupiter and mars very close together rising about one o'clock and any cell phone app will show their their position in the sky so everything's aligning this year everything is everything is, is aligning pretty well too yes so and, and and astronomy has a great way of relieving stress especially since covid you look up at the stars first time, you're, you're just awestruck. Yeah, what, what is it about that? Why, why does it produce such awe? Because, you know, you gave us the technical explanation, which I do appreciate, but it's hard to get my head around that stuff, and yet I do experience the awe. How do you account for that? Well, it's just the vastness of it. There's so many questions that enter everyone's mind as they open up their mouth for the first five seconds and drink in a few bugs. But it's just how big space really is. We we know how, um, pretty well know how things began 13.8 billion years with the Big Bang. And more of that news is coming out. We're finding more exoplanets. So I can show you some stars at night, naked eye stars, that you don't need a telescope, that we know that there are planets around. So knowing all this in the back of your mind, but just seeing that, that glow of the Milky Way, it's the just collective glow of billions of stars, not even individual stars. So it's uh, it's something that's enthralled people for thousands of years, and 
and still does so. I've been interested in astronomy since I was eight years old. That was 59 years ago, and every night is still a first. Uh, very fortunate I live out here in the countryside, retired now, and just, in fact, I was out last night looking at the Milky Way, and whoosh, there was a Perseid. Oh, yeah? Tell me yes. about, oh, yeah. Tell me about the, uh, the best show you've ever seen. Well, one of the best shows, best meteor shower I've seen was the Leonids back in the late 1990s. Because every 33 years, the Leonids put on a huge storm. This is not considered a storm, the Perseids. But a storm is when you have thousands per hour. And the greatest storm of the Leonids was back in 1833 when, when there were thousands per hour. And you've probably seen the artwork of, of uh, meteors raining down. In fact, I think there's even a woodworking um, sculpture that was made too. And it was something like 40 a second or something like that. So almost like like bugs on the, on the windshield or snowflakes on the windshield at night. Now, that was one of the best ones that I've seen. It wasn't those, those numbers, but still to see two, three meteors at the same second is something that I'll never, ever forget. And you're a guy who knows his stuff. I mean, you even have an asteroid named after you. How did that happen? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, I've been, um, as I said, astronomy has been part of my life, except for my, my family and my, and my grandchildren and, and my wife. But starting so uh, so young, I, I started teaching around 1995. So about 30 years now, I've been promoting astronomy as much as I can, going to campsites, schools. I do senior homes now, getting on air, promoting uh, the oldest of the allied sciences. And then I was approached if I would mind to have an asteroid named after me for my work. Well, it took about a nanosecond until I said yes. <laughs> And then eventually uh, the Astronomical, International Astronomical Union uh, granted the, the request that was put in on my behalf. And in fact, on the same day as, as my wife's birthday, I got the email stating that uh, the asteroid was, was renamed 22406 Gary Boyle. Very cool. And it was very cool to talk to you this morning and uh, right across the country. I hope Canadians will be casting their eyes skyward. Thanks so much, Gary Boyle. I hope Boyle. so, too. And just one fun fact yeah. is that uh, John Denver in 1992, when he was camping in Colorado Mountains, he was writing Rocky Mountain High. He witnessed the the, the, uh, the Pleiades that inspired to write the lyrics, I've seen it rain and fire in the sky, the shadow from the, sun, from the starlight is softer than a lullaby. Nice one. Thank you so much. Take care, Susan. Clear skies. Gary Boyle, a.k.a. the Backyard Astronomer, is an astronomy educator and former monthly columnist for the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada.